The Wellness Show, Episode 181, The Healing Hour, Working with Elementals. Welcome to The Wellness Show, a podcast on health and wealth. I'm your host, Tyson Bannigan, the founder of the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy. Join me as we get the latest insight, tips, and strategies from wellness providers, coaches, and successful heart-centered entrepreneurs, and much, much more. Welcome to the Healing Hour, and this is Tyson Bannigan, the Illuminator, the Energy Detective, and I'm with you for the next hour. And during this Healing Hour, the topic of interest and concern for those that are part of the Dowsing Energy Healing Group is working with elementals. So today we're going to talk about what is an elemental, why is it important to work with you with them, how do you do that as a dowser? Uh, what are the benefits of doing that? And of course, I'm available to do any energy clearing that you'd like to happen for yourself, answer any of your dowsing or energy healing questions. And as I said, I'm live with you for the next hour. There's a number of ways in which you can join the show. You can join the show live by clicking the link that you will find in the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy Facebook page. Click on that link. It'll look something. It'll have be live in the word. And I'll click that link. You'll come on into the lobby section. I'll see you there. And then you can join the show live. Okay. So you're right beside me. Everybody can see you. If you don't want to be seen live and you want to hide, which is fine with me, you can phone in toll free in North America, 1 866 dowsing. 1866-dowsing or 1866-369-7464 so that's toll free in north america and of course if you don't want to do any of that and you happen to be on the extraordinary healing arts academy facebook page like eileen doyle is right now she says thank you i'd like to connect so that way i can just show you I can post up your comments there and respond. So, Lane, yes, let's talk to you live if you'd like. It's 1-866-369-7464, toll free. And I see that we have Janet showing up here uh, to join the broadcast. So let's say hello to Janet and move her to the broadcast. All right. Hi, Janet. Welcome to the show. Hey, Tyson. How are you? Hi, Good. How's life in the cottage? Oh, very blissful. I had a really nice nap. And I've been doing – it's fun. I get to do my work automatically. I've been struggling with uh, the end of my title for about, I don't know, four months now. And I, I slept on it, and I woke up, and it was like, ah, that's what it is. <laughs> so, so to me, Adventures in Namaste. This is Jana. <laughs> <laughs> this is Janet, and she's uh, doing an intensive in our Sunny Break Cottage. So she's come to stay with us for, what is it, for a lengthy length of time uh, to um, to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> so, uh, and so I said, Janet, why don't, you wanna, why don't you come and join the show because we're going to be talking about how to work with elementals. And she said, okay, I will do that. So here she is. So welcome to the show. So let's Thank see you. if we got anybody else out there. Oh yeah, let's it's let's show you what the one person. Oh, they're hiding. <laughs> yeah. So it says today's talk show is about how to work with elementals to connect uh, severe weather patterns, chemtrails, heart bioengineering, climate change, and mind control. All these are attempts to override the Earth's natural cycles and hijack human evolution. So, and then we go on to say, if you're not really wanting to be seen, and of course Janet wants to be seen today, is do not click this link because you'll be live on the show. But Janet was courageous, click the link, and she's now live on the show. If you'd rather join by this 1866 dowsing or 3697464, and we're available here for the next hour to take your call. And last but not least, if you head over to the using that link, the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy, leave a comment in 
the and underneath the show, we can then post it here like I'm doing right now and answer your question that way. So without further ado, we will hide this long explanation of how you can join the show and get on with the show. So, Janet, when I talk about elementals, what does that make you think of? Oh, fairies and and gnomes and and dragons and, and stuff that I haven't been letting myself imagine that I know are there and <laughs> like Sasquatches sneaking down the window. <laughs> They just, he just said bodies on his way. <laughs> right. Makes makes That's me what? think of. Think, okay, makes me think of things I know, but I don't know because when I was little, they told me it was all in my imagination. So that's what it makes me think of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you were a little kid, they were, they were the things that people said that, oh, well, that, you, something went bump in the night and you said, whoa, that was a fairy or this was something. And uh, your mom or dad said, no, 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 no. You know, that's just your imagination. And guess what? Maybe it was your imagination and maybe it wasn't. Maybe it yeah, was yeah. working with the mental. So we want you to rediscover your childhood innocence and your letting go of your disbelief. Allow yourself to believe that there's more to this world than meets the eye and that the unseen is as available and equally accessible to you as the real world or the world that we can see with our five senses. So I'm just going to see if I can share this screen because I went to my dowsing manual and looked at, well, what did I read, write about working with elementals? So I thought maybe we could try it that way. So I've never done this, so we'll see whether we can do it this way or not. To share your screen, you need to install the BeLive Chrome extension. I think we've already done that. Um, okay, we're going to cancel that because I think it will actually disconnect us. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to read from the manual. This is called Dowsing and Energy Healing for Personal to Planetary Healing. And uh, the subtitle of the book is As We Heal Ourselves, We Heal the Planet. So this is um, the revision from October 2012. That was an... Uh, in that magical year of 2012, the end of the Mayan calendar, that I finished this copy of my book, which, by the way, is yet to be published. But anyway, so this is the, but it's still there. It's I still was going to ask who wrote that. <laughs> so on page 55, working with elementals, divas, and other kingdoms. The oh, first one I want to talk oh, about. Is the element? Oh, we have a phone call, so that will interrupt our discussion now, and we'll see who wants to talk to us from Garden, California. Hello, welcome to the show. Hello, uh, this is Nico speaking. Hi, how are you, Nico? I'm fine, thank you. Um, is this okay to ask you a question? Sure, we're going to learn about elementals today, but sure, go ahead. Ask what sort of question do you have today? Yes. Um, I do have a very strange uh, the pain, um, especially like on the right side of my body from the base of the skull to the sh uh, shoulder blade. And yesterday, actually, I did have a very tough time to deal with it. And this time, and, and even using my, uh, you know, pendulum, the spinning to clear my energy. But I... Uh, I spoke to the someone who I got connected last October or September, I believe, and they, she was saying that um, I already have an idea how I can describe. And but I don't know. I, I picked too much energy from other people, uh, even though I'm not going to blame anybody else, you know, who is right or who is wrong. But I, right now, even I do have a pain on my lower back, right side of my body. So I'm just wondering, um, besides kind of my living environment that I've noticed about energy, um, how I can deal with or I, I really like to let go of the energy or non-beneficial non uh, presence or energies from my physical body. 
Okay, great question. So, Nico, we've been working a while uh, together, and you've been doing the deep clearing. And I have to say you've been getting miraculous results from an almost instantaneous manifestation. So I want to congratulate you on that. And I also oh, thank you. congratulate you on asking the tough questions. You keep asking more and more questions, which is good. So the first question to ask yourself, because you are an empath, you know, like you feel everybody else's energy, the first good question is, is this mine or theirs? In other words, is this yours or somebody else's? So can you use your pendulum or muscle test and decide whether this is yours to deal with or somebody else's? Uh, yes, or either I do, I, do, I do ask myself my heart. Okay, so and what's the answer? And they, yes, and immediately I get an answer. And whenever, because it's like I'm feeling stuck, so whenever I do feel stuck, it means I do pick people's energies. Right. So okay, so if I it's not it yours, fun. then it's much easier to clear it. And so, in other words, yes. the more that you do the deep clearing, what you're doing, and I don't know what day you're on. I think you're probably around day 14. Oh, yes. Okay, so you're getting there. So the more you do that, you're getting close to being halfway there, the less intrusion there will be into your energy field. So by day 21, it means that it'll be very hard for anybody thought forms to enter into your energy field because you're automatically clearing it. And by day 21, your innate intelligence, which is in your DNA, will take over that program and run it subconsciously and keep you free and clear. So in the meantime, though, I'm going to turn to Janet because Janet has some techniques around this, that, and she's an empath. So Janet, what do you what do you yeah. feel or think with regard to what's going on? I know you're wanting to say something, so jump in. <laughs> well, it was just you said at, at day fourteen we can we can start doing some shortcuts if we can because we've already done stuff and what was coming yeah. into my mind is what you were the fastest, fastest, fastest is just my time for for me. What I would say is, Mary Janet, Irene, Ray, Irene, Janet, Irene, Rady, and that just keeps and everybody else's is just that. If you wanted, it's a little shortcut. Yeah, I don't know if you could did me, you hear that, Nico, because uh, Janet is breaking up a bit, but she was saying her her name three times to ground herself, which is from the Court of Atonement process. Did you hear that? Uh, yes, I can hear. And also, I truly do appreciate, you know, your suggestion about the shortcut, you know, shortcut version. Because um, either the, some, the, I think that, you know, my heart was telling me to do that when uh, I was feeling so down. Instead of doing like a 30 minutes, you know, 35 minutes, you know, entire uh, clearing. Yes. And, and then yesterday, even this morning, um, you do know that I have already recorded. Yes. <laughs> I've been listening to, I've been listening to the, my old, you know, my recorded, uh, deep, you know, uh, self clearing, you know, the audio. But I can tell the difference. Even shortcut version is very much effective. Absolutely. They, yes. Even this morning, I was very because last night I didn't feel well, and only after. I did get up. I immediately did it with a you know, short version. And I'm so grateful, even though I might not answer the question, but I'm so grateful that she suggests that I do the you know, short card. Right. Because, yeah, mostly what I really appreciate is uh, you are really, you do really help me out, even suggesting me, you know, how I can help myself with dancing. And even when I did get connected with someone very awkward, but I just did not stop dancing. Right. Mostly, I was using the dancing with also the imagination in the process. That's why I could move forward. You yeah, know, you do, you're doing um, really well. So I don't know if you were able to hear, Janet, what she was saying is when you state your name, your full birth name, um, uh -huh. you will put you totally in your body. 
And that's from the Court of Atonement. So and I say in my holy name, I, Tyson Bannigan, Tyson Bannigan, Tyson Bannigan, uh, undertake. And so let's just do that for you. So state your name. I. I I'm sorry. Do I have to say my maiden name or my current name? Your your birth name. Okay. I, Naoko Sezaki. So say it again. Two times more. I, okay. I, Naoko Sezaki. Naoko Sezaki. Naoko Sezaki. Totally in my body. I'm sorry. I can't hear very clearly. I'm so sorry. That's all right. I, am, the, I state your name. I'm fully, totally in my body. In my body. In my body. Yes. And I undertake this clearing. I undertake this clearing. To remove any intrusions. To remove all or any intrusions. Into my energy field. Into my energy field. From any and all sources. And any known or any. From any or. From any known or unknown sources. Okay. Or any known and unknown resources. Sources, yeah. And from people, sources, you know, any any anything, right? Anything that's bothering you from anything outside of you, we're going to clear that right now, okay? Yes, please. Okay. I'm sorry, Baba. No, it's okay. And I undertake no, this no, clearing. <laughs> and I undertake this clearing. With the assistance of Prime Creator. With the assistance of my uh, Prime Creator. Throughout all time, space, and dimensions. Through all time, spaces, and dimensions. And through uh, my, and through, through all the my dimensional realities. Okay, all multi-dimensional realities. Yeah, and I declare it so. And I declare so. So be it. So be it. So be it. It is done. So be it. It is done. Yeah. Good. So let so let me just check check your field now. Yes. So yeah. So that did it. So you can come back on the show. It's uh, we're about uh, fifteen minutes into this. No, or about I don't know. About uh, yeah, somewhere after the fifteen minute mark. Come in and you'll get the wording for this, right? And then put it in your own words and like you did, which is a really hot tip for everybody listening to this. When you take the clearings, the short clearings or even the long clearings, and you do what Nico did, put it in your own voice and record it and play it back to you and speak it out loud. It's super, super powerful, and it will bring about the change you want much faster than listening to me or just reading it, or just writing it out. It's much faster in your own voice, listening to your own voice, because you are commanding yourself to do what needs to be done. That message is going from your conscious mind to your innate and subconscious to carry on the program. So the, does that make sense to you, why it works so well? It makes sense to me, yes. And also, so you want me to come back? One yeah, and copy it down. Yeah, and okay. also I'm getting I'm getting guided that if she's not only her own words and her own language. I'm grateful that you told me exactly. Just calling out my name, my maiden name, instead of her maiden name. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah is actually clear that lineage of your, both your maiden name and your other name, clear the lineage of both names so that when you say your name, you're totally 100% aligned with your name. And that's one of the exercises that uh, that Amy, uh, Joe Ellis has people do, is to clear their lineage, which comes from your name so that you resonate 100% with your name, which means you're fully in your body. And so when you do do the clearing, you're doing all of who you are because you're in the body. So when I do, I'm sorry to repeat. Yeah. So when I work with the full culture of the dormant, 
just call, use my name, including my maiden name and my former spouse in his last name, because I'm using my former spouse in his last name legally. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is each one of the, your maiden name has one matriarchal, patriarchal lineage. You clear that. And that your other name, uh, your legal name, has another lineage, matriarchal, patriarchal, and I want you to clear all of that. So that when you say your name, your birth name, you resonate with it 100%. Okay, so there's no ancestral. And particularly because of your culture, there can, there is, I'm not going to say there can be. I'm saying there is, in your case, a lot of ancestral interference. And while you want to listen to your ancestors that are benevolent, and are your guides, you don't want to listen to your ancestors that are still in the process of working this all out. So right now you're overwhelmed because you're being a dutiful girl, living up to your cultural responsibilities, and then having the, the and I'll be blunt, because we talked about, and having the guilt of leaving your family and, in, you know, and coming to America it's a lot that you're processing. So you want to clear all that so that you're just you processing, processing all this and clearing it. Because when you do that, you will help your ancestors. Your ancestors will benefit from all the work that you choose to do. So it's the best way to help them, the best way to respect them. Yes, because I left Japan, however, it's not about, you know, this respectful stuff because I do. I didn't know that I do have my life, and I was taking care of my father, my grandmother, or forever. Yeah. And they, they didn't make a, they didn't make a, you know, the transition. That's why I did come to the United States. Yeah, and but there's lots of people that can judge you about that. You know, are you the senior member of the family? No, actually, I was the youngest one. Right. So at least you don't have the responsibilities of of taking care of your parents in their old age. But as you know, in your culture, there's a lot of responsibility between you and your parents. So I just want you to be really comfortable about you being you and you clearing yourself because when you do that, you clear your parents, you clear your grandparents, your great parents, grandparents and your lineage, and it helps everybody. Wow, well, thank you so much. This is a huge encouragement. Yeah, and thank you for doing the work. You're a very brave soul. Thank you. And I'm sorry about my accent. No, don't ever apologize. Yeah, you're doing your best. Thank you. Bye for now. Go ahead. She's probably listening to that. May I also suggest that when she does it in her own words, she does it in her own language so that she can hear it in her own language? Right. So that's a good one. So. And we've done that um, with doing the sound clearing and make looking at the difference between using because in a sound clearing, oh, there's more information in your voice than there is in the fingerprint. So everything that you need to clear is in your voice. Everything you're working on, you know, your highs and your lows is in your voice. And if you record a, the English, your voice, and in, in, you know, translated into English from your native language, it has less impact on your soul consciousness than speaking it in your native tongue. So, Janet, you're absolutely right. I, and and I've had proof positive that's true by looking at the graphs, at the result from recording people's voices. So you're absolutely right. If she does the clearing in her own language, translates it into her original language, it will be even more powerful. And, in fact, her ancestors will get it even more. Of course, we also know that when we're working on other dimensions, it's beyond language, right? It's really on the intuitive level. But that being said, that's a great thing. Thank you, Janet, for that suggestion. So we're um, almost halfway through the show, and we haven't really even talked about elementals, but that's fine. We talked about ancestors, and we talked about clearings, and we talked about knowing what's yours and what's somebody else's, and taking responsibility for clearing yourself, knowing that you, when you do that, you get to clear your children and your lineage uh, both matriarchal, patriarchal, and your soul family. So that's pretty neat. All right, so uh, I was talking about uh, in the area of elementals, I did mention in the clearing that after you do a clearing for 21 days, what happens is it goes from your conscious, aware mind 
the, the your intelligent mind, the mind of, of speech, and it transfers it to what I call the elemental I, or the innate intelligence, that part that runs your, you know, your breathing and your heartbeat, that autonomous level. And it is taken over. So that innate intelligence is in your DNA. And the beauty of that part of your DNA is it has full memory of every lifetime and a past, past, present, and future because on the other dimensions of your DNA, because it's multidimensional, it has full memory of all of that, which is very exciting when you think about it because when you get to that level, there's no boundaries, there's no limitations. And so when you instruct your DNA from your conscious mind, it will act on that intention and fulfill it. So if you think about the fact that as human beings, we they say we're only operating from 5% of our intelligence, our brain, and they say, well, the other 95% is junk DNA, which is another way of just saying, as a scientist, I don't know what the hell this 95% is there for, so I'll call it junk. And what it means is that 95% is still available for you, but you need to give it the commands from your intelligent mind of what you want from your innate intelligence or your elemental I. So that's why when you do a clearing and you say, I don't want this in my life or not in my life, and then I and then you say, I do want this in my life. I don't want this, but I want this. Then it gives the instructions to your innate intelligence to run that program so it will manifest in your life. So that means the more you talk to that part of your being, the more it will listen and the more the manifestation that you request will actually come and manifest quicker into your life. So did that make sense to you, Janet? That did. That did. That did. Good. Do you have any questions? Did you have any questions about that? Because that's a lot of words. Nope, I don't, <laughs> sir. Okay, great. So that's your elemental yeah. eye. So if that elemental eye, because it is part of the elementals, can now is your connection to all elementals, all other elementals. So that elemental eye, which is beyond language, uh, it, which is in the two to upper levels of beingness, is connected to all other elementals. And through that part of your being, you can communicate telepathically with every elemental. Or another way of doing this is you can imagine that that elemental is a third dimensional entity, place it in the chair across from you and have a conversation with it. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that it's just like having a conversation with it as if they were a human being. Because as you translate that into, into English, there's a vibrational frequency that goes into the picture language, and from the picture language goes into the intuitive language, and the elemental will understand it. The important thing is to do that from your heart, not from your brain. So when you're talking to the elemental, you're, you're in a love, compassionate connection with that elemental to have that conversation. So moving on then, Let's say that elementals, from my experience, have been waiting for the opportunity to work with humans for a long time. Uh, in the time of Lemuria, we were elemental beings. We didn't have the language. We were as close to the fairy kingdom and the animal kingdoms uh, as we are to other human beings. In other words, there was even there was even fairy humans and human fairies. There was interbreeding between those dimensions. It's only as we became more dense in the third dimension with the fall of Liberia and Atlantis that we became more embodied, more ingrained, more in solid matter and more divorced from our ability or remembrance that we are fully connected with the divine and all the different elements of the divinity, which are the elementals. So the elementals welcome the opportunity to work co-creatively with humans. The key is to respectfully ask for assistance and certainly not to command. Working uh, with them as you would work with your light team or, you know, with your guides or with creator energy. 
the fact they can become part of your, your light team and work with you directly in clearing, dowsing, and the work that you're undertaking. So um, taken together, will and feeling, which are fire and water, create through intellect and form, which are air and water. So let me do that again. So you yourself are fire, water, air, and earth, right? And so the will is the fire and the feeling is the water. And through your intellect and form, your intellect is the air and your form is the matter. So you're already made up of the elementals and you're already, your innate intelligence is already communicating with them and already reading, upgrading your body according to working with elementals. So in the fires that we had in California, we had terrible fires this summer uh, through British Columbia. Uh, there was a lot of interest in the dowsing and energy healing group about, well, how do we work with taming the fires? What, what can we do? And the salamanders are the fire beings. And that's coming from the ancient wording of, if you want to think about working with the fire elementals, if you look at the flames dancing, they do look like, uh, they do look like uh, salamanders. So if you can picture the element of, of fire in the chair or when you're communicating as a salamander, you will understand that it's trying to communicate that you're trying to communicate and so your opening statement to the salamander or the fire element might be i honor your divine work of transmutation i with my elemental purification of my light body the inner fire and the body of the planet which is the outer fire and so they both can carry on carry more light for the purpose of the ascension of humanity and the planet I ask your assistance, fire elemental, to modulate the wildfire or the or the situation, and you state the area that you want them to work on, in accordance with the divine plan. I translate, transmute, and transform all the negative psychic cords of fear that might be used to drain energy away for the transmutative power of fire. So, in other words, what I'm saying is fire an opportunity to clean up the trap of human emotion that's locked into earth so that earth herself can go through the transmission or the transmutation to the higher level of being. And part of that is clearing up all the trauma that's come from humans. So, for example, in California, if you talk to the First Nations people, they would say really where the, the more uh, high-end houses are built that that area is subject to fire. They've known it since time and memoriam. And they would say, no, we would never build there because the fire will, no matter what, run through that area. It's part of the, the area of the planet that gets cleaned and scrubbed by fire. But as a culture that's divorced from knowing that, of uh, being connected to the elementals, we just go ahead and build there. It's just like, building on the San Andreas fault line. You know, that's the, the earth telling you that's where I shake, rattle and roll. Uh, beware of this. This is the back of the dragon. You can see all the bones on the dragon don't build there, but we ignore that build there and then wonder why we're going to have so much problems with earthquakes. So that's how you would work with uh, the salamanders. And, of course, it's similar with the uh, undines, which are water and also with, uh, with the other two elementals as well. So that's pretty exciting. So when it comes to, well, the topic that we were talking about, well, if you're working with elementals to correct severe weather patterns, how do you do that? Well, you really are each weather pattern that is being birthed is literally being incubated out of the ocean. So if it's a hurricane or it's a storms like we've just had on the east coast of North America, then you talk to that as if it were a living entity because guess what it is? And you ask if you can work with it and you ask what it is that it's trying to do. And it, invariably it's trying to clean up the energy and resolve the tension and conflict that's happening on planet Earth. 
So in other words, most, almost everything can, is induced by human fear, doubt, shame, and guilt on the negative end of the scale, and all of it can be rectified on the positive end of the scale by gratitude, gratefulness, and, and love, and thanking the elementals. So if the elementals is neutral and it's cleaning up energy that needs to be cleared up so the earth can ascend, then the more that you help uh, by sending it love and appreciation for the work that it's doing, the less effort or energy it has to put in in doing the actual clearing. So what you're doing through your prayer and your request and working with the elementals is balancing out the equation. And, of course, if you do it as a group, and that's the really the power of the dowsing and energy healing group, which is now at 2,272 people, could you imagine if actually 2,272 people directed their energy of love and appreciation to a storm that was gathering in the ocean, that that would have an incredible effect and would actually divert the storm and calm it down. And so if that's our responsibility as planetary earth stirs, is to learn how to do that and know that it's our divine right to do it. And in fact, that's what we're being requested to do. So, so then what does that have to do with, well, that has to do, of course, with correcting severe weather patterns. We work with the elementals to calm them down so that the, the clearing doesn't have to be as intense. So what does that have to do with chemtrails? Well, chemtrails, harp, bioengineering, and all those are ways in which the hidden hand is attempting to dumb down the planet so the planet does not go through its ascension process. But it's all pure energy. I mean, everything is energy pure or otherwise. So that energy that's trying to dampen down consciousness can be matched and can be overcome by just pure divine love. So again, if we can stay out of fear or shame or guilt, and we use the collective energy that we just talked about and working with the elementals, and actually ask the elementals to assist us, then we can reverse all the effects of those bioengineering techniques that are being used. So for example, for chemtrails, I have um, or organ generator at the bottom of my garden. It's really made by my friend who's a master in this area. And it's made out of copper pipes. And inside of it are double terminated four inch crystals and each one of the eight pipes, which are about 12 feet up in the air. And then there's five pounds of organite cast in the bottom, which is 50% organic and 50% inorganic. And that combination pushing on the crystals causes piezoelectricity and broadcast, which is the same as your TV, your radio, your computer. It's all a crystal under pressure that creates on, off, which is your how the binary code works. So when you take the binary code, which is from that crystal broadcasting, and you put in an attention, which is to clear the chemtrails, and you point it into the sky, guess what it does? It clears the chemtrails. Because you're using your consciousness working with crystals and technology to counter the technology that is being used to re, to try and dumb you down. Now, if you think of what a, the amount of money that it takes to do chemtrails, of loading all that stuff into planes, creating all the nozzles to spray it all over, paying for all the pliats and all the fuel and all the crisscrossing of all the skies to do all this, and then you think about what it costs to create an organ generator, cloud buster at the bottom of my garden, it's incomparable. So what I'm trying to say, it doesn't take very many resources when you work with Mother Earth and the elementals to reverse any of these attempts you down. Now, does it make it harder for us to raise our consciousness when there's this interference? Of course it does. No doubt about it. Would we get there faster if there wasn't any interference? Of course we would. But it doesn't mean that we have to roll over and play dead and say, oh, poor me, you know, all this is happening to me. That's EMFs and all the rest of it. I can't do anything about it. Of course you can do something about it. And that's why we're encouraging to learn how to do this and why it's important to work with elementals. So there you are. It's a bit of Maya Tyson bending in, standing on his soapbox, having a little rant about how to do this. But guess what? It's all doable. And I see that Janet has left, and she's in the lobby section, but I can see her smiling uh, as she listens to the, the broadcast. So we're standing by. We've had my little time to tell you all about how I think you can work with elementals 
Uh, uh, let's just do one more. Uh, uh, we are standing by for your call. So if you'd like to fold in toll free and receive a reading or a clearing, it's one eight six six dowsing or one eight six six three six nine seven four six four and we're standing by for your call now. And also you could just put your comments into Facebook and we'll pick them up there. Or you can click that be live link and we can see you live in the show right here, right beside me. Not beside yourself, beside me. So looking forward to you connecting in with us to have a conversation to get you free and clear. Oh, and we got Janet waving her hand. So just a minute here to see if I can put this up. I have this idea of how to do this. So here's the BeLive link. It looks like that. To click the link, to come on, and let's just see if we can figure out how to show. So in this long part is, if you can see it, you'll see the dowsing uh, at the bottom here, dowsing. 1866 dowsing or 18663697464 standing by for your call. So I'm just going to bring Janet back in. She's waving at me. All right, you're back live on the show, Janet. Welcome back to the show. Thanks. Well, while we're waiting for someone else to call, I got an awareness when you're working with the elementals and my. My awareness is that we're always telepathically, and when we're in uh, flight, fright, fear, sympathetic, we're still communicating with them, but we're sending fear. If if if, if I can just be really calm, then I can be calm with the yellow bitens. I'm. I'm taming what I'm sending to them because, like, like it's it's like if there's a dog that you see a dog and you're afraid, then they can feel the fear and they they. But if if you're calm, then then you can communicate uh, differently. So part of, part of if 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 I'm thinking that I'm always communicating with the taming the taming myself, then I. I'm realizing the the energy that the way you're talking about doing it. So sending the good from neutral you and theta healing when we do group healing. So I, I just had this beautiful awareness of like your whole dowsing community sending just the the love to transmit the or to to diffuse the the energy. It's beautiful. So there, there, that's all I wanted to say while we were waiting. Yeah, that's a very powerful thing that you're saying is that, you know, if you were an elemental and your job was to clean up the earth, you know, for example, the sylphs, because their ele ele elementals have the major job of cleaning up the chemtrails, right, and modulating the weather, you know, balancing and working with the water element, you know, so that there's too much rain, that there's floods, right, and all the rest of it. So they're always working and balancing with the, the planetary evolutionary energy which the planet is wanting to evolve, and we're part of the brain consciousness of the planet. So if we're sending fear out, oh, my God, there's a storm coming, and it isn't terrible, we have to do this and that, then the elementals themselves think, oh, my God, there's even more that we have to clear. So they're going to increase their intensity to clear even more, so the storm's going to be bigger and raging stronger because they feel that there's more energy that needs to be cleared. If you're sending them love and passion and, and understanding why there is a storm that it needs to clear the energy of that place on the planet and you send loving energy to all concerned for the most benevolent outcome of all of humanity and all of life then the elemental elementals can calm down because they know that they're being assisted so again that's what earth stewardship is all about making that the divine connection between the angelic kingdom or which we are earth angels right and the elementals which are we are all one you know we are all one group and that those three that unity or that trinity makes up gaia's consciousness you know the evolutionary force of evolution is those three forces and when you think about angels can't do what humans can do because they're not in a physical body 
and we can't do what angels do on the higher dimensions because they're on higher dimensions and that we're not used to accessing yet. And they teach us that we are, that's who we are as well, right? At the same time mm -hmm. as we're incarnated, we are an angel and we act, can access their levels. And the elementals teach us, well, there's the lower levels of who you are that you can access also that you can't, be, that you don't remember either. So the elementals now can do things that humans can't do. And we can do things that elementals can't do. But eventually, when that trinity becomes one, all three of us can work in unity. And Gaia will go through a major planetary shift in consciousness because all of its constituents' parts went through conscious shifts as well. So you can think, you know, which comes first? I'm not sure which comes first. But I think we need to start with ourselves. Exactly. And that, that was the other awareness that I got, like how, how the hidden hand would be able to work on us would be to feed the fear. So, so, uh, so, so, so like Mother Teresa said, uh, like, I, I won't go to a, an anti-war rally, but I'll, I'll go to a peace, peace rally anytime. Like the one thing that's our major tool, like what can the humans do? like the humans can take can take responsibility for their thoughts so so just by being like you were saying in our personal power and not 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 feed the anger not feed the hate not feed the that but just totally be in power and neutrality and even send love to the hidden hand like like a care bear stare kind of thing we then that's where we have our most power. Like if we're doing our stuff, like how do we do our inside job to be as common and as loving and who we truly are, like one with the Gaia. I, exactly. I think it, yeah. Nicely stated. And then Dr. Moto, yeah, like like the whole thing with Dr. Moto, like like if the crystals, we, we're going to send love and just, I, I'm convinced it's just going to take one of us to do the inside job to make it beautiful. Anyway, that's what I'm saying, just waiting for people to call. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think, you know, I always play around with the idea. Chairman Mao said in his little red book, it takes, I can't remember, three or six percent of the population to you know, create a revolution. Well, what if he's right? In a, and what if it's the same and it takes three to six percent of the population to create an evolution. So yeah. instead of welcome, yeah, exactly. to revolution, welcome to the evolution. I mean, we can do it, and we're so much closer than we think we are if we can stay out of the fear and the shame and the gout and the you know and all the nest and the negativity of the poor me's or they're doing it to me or the government or whatever we want to say is responsible outside of ourselves. We go in, and of course, the Beatles were right. All you need is love. It'll change everything. Yeah, it's just yeah, like like don't feed it and don't give it any more of that energy. And what was coming to my mind is like evolve to to dissolve, like to, to evolve love, to dissolve. evolve to dissolve. Yeah, yeah. That that to me that's or that's what I think. Or dissolve to resolve. Well, that, that's gonna work works for me so that I can be as calm as I can be so that the elementals understand me is <laughs> <Okay. laughs> to be calm and loving. Yeah, and I'll take that into your body when you think about it. Okay, you know, that you're generating the inner fire from the food that you eat, you know, which is, you know, working with the elementals that help the vegetables grow and everything. And now you can take all that awareness of how to work with the elementals outside of yourself, inside of yourself to work with your elemental eye balance of the fire, air, yeah. earth, and you know, water with inside of yourself to come to resolution and come to peace with it and give it love and you, then you'll find that transformation happens very quickly inside of yourself. And, and that's the one that I'm really working on as well. And, and that's the exciting one, right? As to make this new relationship mm -hmm. uh, with our bodies, with the elementals in our bodies. Yeah, and even I would even change the word like work. You don't work with the elementals; you play with them, like working. Yeah, okay, to, fine. <laughs>
<laughs> no, you're right. This you know, let's get rid of this Protestant work ethic, work ethic where everything we do has to be worked. And why don't we put, like you say, the playback in it so that we can play with this? Yeah. As kids, we didn't go out no. to work. We went to play. Yeah, and like like in Theta, when we call in the fairies, like we need to like sing in tune and be really light, light, light. And then they want to come. Then then we're at their frequency. Like it, we have to be at the frequency of the. Uh, we don't have to do anything, but if, if yeah, like for the that's light. That's the funny part. Things. You don't have to really do yeah. anything. Uh, I want to, the yeah. the shaman I worked with in. Uh, Mayan shaman said, can you imagine what it would be like to be an elemental and then have to squeeze yourself into the, the way in which your that culture can recognize you? So for, you know, for a fairy, I have to put on these wings and have a magic wand and have a pretty dress on and go da, 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 to get your attention, right? Because that's what our culture thinks a fairy looks like, right? And if you were in uh, Mayan culture, you would be, you know, like you would be a glyph. You'd be all in a little square, you know, in a in a cube that's all carved out in a symbol, right? So as an elemental, you have to learn how to the codex of the language or the culture that you're working with. And so the the humorous thing is all that's irrelevant to working with an elemental. They're just pure energy. Yeah. All you just have to do yeah. is just think of fire and the warmth of fire and you're one with the fire. Uh, but there are, you know, there are ways that you can speed that up. So, for example, um, one of the ways you can connect with uh, a water elemental is imagine yourself having scales. You know, like the mermen or the mermaids. You know, they're half men and they're half fish. And there was a time on planet Earth that there was half men and half fish. So that memory is still in our DNA and in the elemental's advanced DNA. So when you think of yourself having scales, it helps them understand that you're trying to communicate with them. Well, we've lost Janet, but we're still standing by. We have a few more minutes on the show until the top of the hour. We're waiting for you to phone in if you would like to have a clearing or ask any dowsing and energy healing um, questions. Uh, the topic today that we've been dealing with is working with elementals. Uh, the four elementals, and um, Marilyn uh, Ropsky says the element of ether as well. Yeah, ether is very interesting, you know, when you do the five elements of the Chinese, you know, the ether in the five um, platonic solids is really, um, is the dodecahedron. It's really pure sound, so yes. Again, when you're talking about ether as an elemental, we're talking about beyond the beyond. We're talking about like the Tao or the ineffable ether, or um, maybe in terms of scientific terms, you might be thinking of that as black matter or ways that where you're trying to describe the undes undescribable. So yes, Marilyn, thank you for that. Absolutely. I tend to do the four from the Germanic tradition or the Celtic tradition of fire, earth, air, and water, but you're right, the, four, the five platonic solids allow you to have the five platonic solids working with the elementals as well. All right, so Ellen Doyle McAbb says, thank you, I will try and connect. All right, so those are the comments we have to date. I'm just going to show again, uh, just for those that are coming onto the show or getting this near the end of the show, Today's talk, we've been talking about working with elementals to connect and deal with severe weather patterns, chemtrails, heart, bioengineering, climate change, and mind control. So that was for the topic of today. And we're still uh, available for anybody who would like to call in or leave any comments. So that's Janet. I see that you're back. And we're coming near the top of the hour. We've still got five minutes more. So I'm um, going to put you back on live here. So you're back on the show. So it was great having you on the show. Is there any comments you'd like to add at this point? Um, any well, applause? I, I, uh, James, James Power just said the fifth element that splashed off. Like Maya has this, like, okay, when we do the fear, like, um, 
we just heard the news or we see a chemtrail and we just get into the <clears throat> they're doing it or the hidden hand or in the when we get stuck in the drama do you have any like pointers to get us out really quick or do you have a process to just clear quick or yeah i mean if to clear quick is just to, the once you've done the the, the deep clearing or or, or I know you could probably do this with theta or you could probably do it with access is to make a short form right which is you know when i touch my heart i'm free and clear or once you've done the deep clearing and you've done the short clearing the short form is just clear so when you remember to clear because you've done that for a repetitive times you know we were talking today about the whole idea of ten thousand hours to build you know to be a michael jordan in basketball or to be the best golf player or whatever and how we can allow ourselves right. to shorten that down to any length we want if we allow ourselves mm -hmm. to be the master that we really are because we're all masters the only thing that disallows right. us from being a master is our consciousness in the way that oh how could i possibly do that i have to work hard into a succeed blah 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 not that learning well even the thought of learning to have to do the skills i mean i'm just going to throw this in we were talking about Bert, you know, doing, you know, Bert Gold, what's his name? Bert Goldman talking about quantum jumping and how he did a quantum jump to the part of himself, his doppelganger, who knew how to play a piano. He sat down and played the piano. Right. So he didn't have to go through 10,000 yeah. hours of, of learning how to play the piano. He didn't have to go through 10,000 hours to learn to be the photographer. So the point is, when you're working with the elemental part of who you are and that consciousness, you're beyond space and time. So you can allow yourself, once you know and feel confident, like when you were learning to be confident with Creator, that when you're there, you're there. So you would say, yeah. clear, and put it clear. Yeah. Or I am connected yeah. to Creator. Boom, you're connected. Because it's you right. and your command, I am, saying this is so. And guess what? It is so. So James right. Power says, so awesome. show. thank you. Can't wait for the next one. Yeah, thanks for dropping by. And James, if you want to jump on the show at any time, and in fact, we have a few more minutes. So James, if you want to phone yeah. in toll free, one 369 Tell us about this fifth element and from what, what you've learned from the show, how would you apply that to working with the fifth element? What's the fifth element yeah. mean for you? And Annette, uh, thank you. She says, hello, Tyson. One of these days, Annette, you'll get to spell my name right, but that's all right. In the meantime, I'll be a, a Thyssen. Uh, can you use elementals for meteors or any planet coming too close? Yeah. You can yeah. talk to sure. anything that's living. And, in fact, this mm -hmm. is called interspecies communication. You can talk right. to the whales. You can talk to the ETs. You can talk to crystal skulls. You can do animal communication. You become an animal whisperer. You do all that, and how do you do that? You just <laughs> tune into that frequency. And James Power just said, Maybe God, yeah. Well, yes, when you say, I am, I am, I, you're saying, I am God, or I am source, or one. And when you are, you have the divine right to bring that consciousness into the physicality of who you are. And as Christ said, You know, what I can do, you can do, and even greater because. He allowed himself to be the I am consciousness. He was not just the son of God. He was God. He allowed that God energy, that creative energy to be in every cell of his being. So, yeah, maybe you're right, James. Maybe uh, that fifth element is you allow yourself in that moment to be a master of all that you survey and that you allow yourself to be in the I am consciousness. I am one with creator. And then you create a miracle. And, and, you know, the best way to test that out is when you're up against it and you need a miracle, then just pull that energy down. And guess what? You'll have a miracle. Usually it's when there's in a crisis happening. Uh, you know, like uh, somebody's run over by a car and, and that car is right on top of them and, you, and somebody needs to pick up the car and you just step into that consciousness and guess what? You single-handedly lift up the car. So where did that energy come from? Where did that power come from? It came from your innate intelligence, from your I am God consciousness. And when you're in a crisis, guess what? You just do it. You don't think about it. 
There's no shame. There's no doubt. There's no fear. There's nothing in the way. You just are it in that instant. So thank you, James, for bringing that up because you're absolutely right. And yes, it is sweet. When you're in that sweet spot, allow yourself to be all you can be. Then you're a sovereign human mm -hmm. being. And there's no more clearing after that. You are free and clear. Yep. So for yeah. you, Janet, what's your sweet spot? When you say, you know, I'm connected to creator, do you have something like you put your hand in your heart or do you put your hand in your finger yeah, in your third uh, eye? Uh, that, that's what I just got today. Like I had to, after our session today, I had to go sleep on it. Cause, and it's yeah. like, cause that was like, what do I declare? And it's like, I am Mary Janet Irene Rady and I am love. That's the yeah. essence of me. That's yeah. the frequency. I am true love. Yeah. yeah. And if yeah. you're true, and I so love you. Yeah. And then like, that's why I got the end of my book, the title. It was like, uh, Adventures in MS play, and you always say just show up, but I couldn't get the rest, which is just show up and be love. So it came, like and I it. just had sleep on it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, yeah. So it is. All right, everybody, like, we're near the top of the hour, and we had a lot of fun on this show, learning how to work with the elemental eye, which is your innate intelligence, which is connected to your DNA, to every past life, to every incarnation you've ever had on planet Earth, and every incarnation you'll have from now until eternity, whatever eternity is, because there's no time and space. So when you work with your innate consciousness, that innate intelligence, which is connected to the elemental forces and to source, God Almighty, or however you want to call your beloved, then you have access to all of this. It causes, provides you interspecies communications. You can talk with crystal skulls. You can work with elementals. You can clear storms. You can protect humanity from mediator. You get always in the right place at the right time. You can have miracles manifest in your life, and you're full of ease and grace. And to me, that's the planet I envision. And so the more people we can bust through from their pain and suffering, which is all self-induced, uh, into being able to step into this sovereignty and say, I love myself unconditionally. I am I. I am one with God. I am source. And I am here to bring change and transformation in the planet. By clearing myself, I clear others, and I clear my lineage, and I clear the planet. And for that, I'm truly grateful Then we will inhabit a new world. So thank you all for being on the call. And James says, sorry, I don't wish to be tolerated. Thanks, okay, with me here. All right, great. Thanks for I love you. Out, Just the way you are, James. Love you all. <laughs> See you next week, same time. Same place. Bye for now. Bye. Janet's comments from attending the show. Hey, it's me. I just uh, was playing with Tyson and uh, the the healing hour, and uh, we talked about harp and chemtrails and elementals and changing the weather patterns. And hey, Bruce, how you doing? <laughs> so we talked about uh, like. Um, what what's happening with the weather and all that and how we can uh, uh, how we can I, I'm getting all these notices from the phone I can <laughs> hi okay let's take two okay so calm down that's the four that's what I learned when uh, when working with the elementals to try to change weather patterns and all that it's it's kind of like going right into the, the being Yoda and being very, very calm and very, very peaceful because uh, we're always communicating with the elementals. So if we're feeling fear, or they're feeling fear, we're, the energy that we're transmitting is the energy they're receiving. So, well, this is my, my take of it. So. The, the calmer I can be, then at least I'm not feeding the energy to, and then if I can even uh, transmit like uh, the antidote frequency, so like send love, then that'll just help neutralize because pretty much it's just, uh, the earth is just balancing and clearing. So the more fear energy there is and the more people are revved up 
and sending more fear, then that's what's going to take over. And the the sooner we can calm down, then we just and send the antidote, the love. The, the Beatles were right. That's what I figured out. Hey, <laughs> Tyson, calm down. Yes, I've got it right. Yeah, so it's mostly just uh, breathe. Breathe and just be. And uh, so I always had that intuition I, that I was create. Not only am I creating my reality, I'm, I'm like just, if I worry enough, I'm creating storms and creating like busting planets <laughs> like we're that powerful yeah so it's just like just just be calm be calm breathe anyway that's all i got to say for today it was fun bye-bye hey brucey you're beautiful too i love you thank you tyson it was a good day for quality online wellness products, courses, and services, visit our sponsors, thewellnessstore.ca and the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy located at thewellnessacademy.ca. To stay in touch, visit us at thewellnessshow.ca. And until next time, be healthy, wealthy, and wise.